Week two, 2D kinematics. So I worry that you will focus on torque and rotation in all your studying and then blow off things like this. So I've had several people ask, are you going to give us the range, height, and time equations for a projectile? And the answer is no, definitely not. If we gave you those and gave you problems with just an even projectile, this is just a plug and chug exam. And what's the point, right? So if you can't derive those, you're probably going to struggle with any of the projectile problems. Right? Because the projectile problems are ones where you really have to understand the x kinematics and the y kinematics. And deriving those is part of that. So now we're going to talk about the spectrum of Professor Hafner's problems. Uh, do we need to memorize the gravity formulas? Uh, I can't remember if that's on the equation sheet or not, but we'll put it on the equation sheet. So let me be clear. I, I thought I put this on the sheet, but if I didn't, we'll put it on there. G m1 m2 over r squared. We'll put that on the equation. That was the general gravity force between two objects. To remember as trig identities, uh, if you do a problem in a really screwed up way, you might need a trig identity. They are not designed to need trig identities. But with trig, you can always mess up. OK, so the spectrum of Professor Apple's problems. OK, here we go. OK, it's very large. So over here are the easy problems. These are the ones I like to do in lecture, just to illustrate something. right? Oh, we have a block on the thing, and I push it with my hand and there's friction this way, and I push this way, how fast it go? You're like, well, yeah, I can do that, but I can't do the pledge problem. Right, so that's the easy, or no, no, let's, let's say easy. Let's say something is hanging from a rope. Its mass is M. What's the tension? Right, that's the stuff I get to do in the lecture, because I only have 75 minutes. I don't have all the oh, board. Um, and then, then there's the hard problems, right? So what's over here? Pledge problems, right? That's where we really say, do you really know what's going on? The pledge problem, we did a trajectory and we put acceleration in the x, and acceleration in the y, and in the x. None of the range equations are going to help you with that, right? You have to really think about it. So for example, acceleration in x, oh, that was hard. And then we also have the hard homework problems, right? Remember the ball in the pyramid? Oh my god. <laughs> right? We didn't even teach anything about that. You just had to understand the trajectory, and you had to think about what is this edge of a pyramid? It's not a trajectory, but it's a surface. So when does it hit that surface? Well, you look at what y x equals. Right? So those are really hard. And then in the middle is sort of the normal homework. Or average, I'll say. And this is like normal homework. It's not plug and chug, but it's also not wildly new concepts. It's somewhere reasonable problems. So people keep asking me, how are the exam problems? Well, the variance in all of our ability to do the exam problems is about this big. Okay, so it's hard for me to say exactly where the exam problems are. Okay, some people find all these problems easy. Some people still try to work on that. Right? It's okay. It's okay. They still work on that. But you need to study a lot before tomorrow night. So the question is, where do the exam problems fall? I would say they fall about here. Right? You've got to be able to do them fast. Think about it, you got two hours, and you got to do two free response problems. So multiple choice, you spend half an hour, you got 90 minutes left, 45 minutes for each free response. So we can't make them like this, right? But we're trying to actually give you an exam, we can't do this. So they're somewhere in the middle. I would say they're like the median homework problem. Okay. A TI-84 be on the exam. That's like a robot that helps you in the middle. I don't know what a TI-84 is, so I assume it's a calculator. <laughs> like I said last time, calculator, as long as it doesn't talk to the internet, it's a lot of the exam. Couldn't you add more parallel axis theorem to the equation sheet? Uh, the parallel axis theorem is not the equation sheet. You want more parallel axis theorem, there's only one. <laughs> uh, I could like make the font bigger. Or, uh, uh, should we memorize the range height equation? So I just said, if you think you really need the range height equations, you can't derive them, memorize them. If you can't derive them, you may struggle. Okay? So that's why I'm worried that everybody's going to focus. Oh my god. Let's just do this for 75 minutes. Uh, will G be on the equation sheet? Sure, we'll put the value of G. Oh. No, big G, big G. That's the one you don't know. I forgot it. 6.67 times 10 to the minus 
Hello. We'll put that on there. Uh, okay, we're gonna also, I will get to the problem. Is the test request your favorite representative of how this should be? Uh, maybe. I think so. Uh, uh, can we come up with a relative weight? I've chosen not to do that in this review. What about the suggested problems? Yes. Um, how many significant figures should be? Uh, we don't care about significant figures. Put three. Three significant figures. You have to be three significant figures. That makes you feel better that I give you a command. To review the pledge problem, no, because we close to the solution. I'm trying to do different problems today. When do we use uh, F equals MV x squared over R? Yeah, okay, maybe we'll get to that one. No Is the test request your representative? Yeah. Will book problems be similar to questions on the test? That's what I'm saying here, right? So if you took your average book problem, I would say the suggested problems are also in here. Now, if you look in the book, the ones with three dots at the end, those are the challenge problems. Those are hard. So I would say the exam is sort of like two dot problems. The book has this method with dots about how hard they are. Right. Okay, I'm about to uh, be done here. Well, the book probably some of the questions test. Do we need to know about rolling friction? No, I'll tell you when we get there. We're not worried about rolling. How do you derive the range height equations? Um, well, you're going to kind of see we do a problem. Can we solve reference rate problems? So everybody's really freaked out about those. I wouldn't worry so much about that. And finally, do you straighten your hair? No, I do not straighten my hair. <laughs> uh, naturally straight. Okay, so now we're going to keep going after all that fun, okay? Do you suggest doing the suggested problem? <laughs> Right? A trajectory may involve uneven, so you need to understand the range equation. So let's think about trajectories and like what would be easy and what would be hard. Okay? Easy is a uniform trajectory. Right? That's plug and chug. If you had the range equations at your fingertips, you could solve any problem. It might be tricky. You might say, how high do you get? How long does it take to get this high? Ooh, only half the hang time. I mean, that's about as hard as we can make it. Okay? Kind of normal. Remember when we did the beer pong question and it fell lower, right? We said, well, one way to do it is to break it into two parts. So you figure out how long it took it to do this, and then you could say, what about this little last part? That would be kind of a normal, tricky homework problem, I guess. And then hard would be like, you know, beer pong. But some uneven trajectory, I would say it's totally fair game for an exam. Because you actually have to understand these kinematics equations and what they mean. Acceleration in the X, I would say, maybe going a little too far. That could maybe be an exam that's pushing towards, you know, more of a pledge problem. Okay? Okay, so that's 2D kinematics. We'll do problems, too. I'm just, we're 